Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We are going to get started. So a few housekeeping rules. Um, this webinar is being recorded and we'll send the recording to all guests following the event. Uh, we'll have 10 minutes of Q&A after each of our panelists talk. Um, all participants are on mute, so please feel free to type your questions in the question panel on your screen um, at any time throughout this webinar. And again, we'll get to it at the end. With that, I am your moderator for the day. I'm Dr. Brittany Volk. Um, you know, good morning to all of you. Thank you for joining us. Or if you're like me, coming to you from the East Coast, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as as I mentioned, uh, I'm Dr. Brittany Volk, and I'm on the clinical education team here at Verta Health. I'm a registered dietitian and a passionate nutrition researcher. My true passion lies in the translation of science and specifically the power of nutrition for those living with diabetes, making Verta here the perfect place for me. Now, having been here since, since day one of Verda, now years later, getting to present with our fantastic team today, it's truly such an honor. So that's a little bit about me, your moderator for the next hour, or 55 minutes, I should say. Uh, thank you for spending the time with us as we explore how people in the diabetes community are coping with and responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. We'll hear from a few of our patients here at Verda, as well as share how our clinical team is supporting patients throughout this time. Now we've got a lot to cover, so let's get started with our first panelist. Richard Wood will open our discussion today with the latest insights on how diabetes patients around the world are responding to the COVID pandemic. Richard is CEO of DQ&A, the diabetes market research company, which he founded with Kelly Close in 2009, with a vision to amplify patient voices using rigorous and cutting edge research techniques. 11 years and a few million data points later, DQ&A's ongoing research programs in the USA, Canada, and six European countries still have the same focus on understanding the needs and improving the experiences of people with diabetes. Now, Richard was previously Vice President of Consumer Insights at Nielsen and holds an MBA from NT. We are thrilled to partner today with Richard. So Richard, without further ado, over to you. And thank you for all you do for the diabetes community. Thanks, Brittany. There we are. Well, here I am at DQ&A World Headquarters, as you can see, um, and uh, we're going to basically look at some of the data we've been collecting from uh, work that DQ&A has been doing. We've been donating our time and resources to trying to track uh, the COVID experience in the USA. We've done three waves of research in the USA now, and we have another one coming up at the end of the month. Um, and then uh, single waves of research, which have just come out in Canada and Europe. And the European data is literally, uh, you know, brand new. We got it yesterday. So uh, I won't be talking much about Europe because we're still crunching it, but I will give you some of the headlines. And um, we've had about 8,000 patient responses so far, uh, which feels pretty good. And it's from a very broad mix of people with, um, from all across the diabetes spectrum. That's um, adults with type 1 diabetes, parents of kids with type 1. Uh, people with type 2 diabetes who um, are on insulin, uh, people with type 2 diabetes who are on oral medications and GLP-1. So really, really a, a broad um, range of people. Um, about 4,500 of those people are from the U.S., and it's, it's their um, feedback that we're going to be looking at today. So um, hang on, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Wait a second. So here's, here's kind of, we would, we've asked, been, been asking people basically what their main concerns are. Uh, and you, you can see basically what's, um, what's going on here. Um, very high levels of concern. This is people who are either somewhat or very concerned about um, their family getting COVID-19, about them getting it themselves. Um, availability of testing is a big issue. Um, Two thirds of people concerned about the financial aspect of uh, of COVID, and we'll look at that in a bit more detail. This population has been um, uh, affected by that, certainly. Um, uh, there are a fair amount of anxiety about um, food here as well, ability to get healthy food, and we've all seen various you know, things stocking out in supermarkets are, 
um, over the past few weeks. And the impact on their diabetes management, we'll look at what that really means, or what's actually happening there. Um, and only about half of the um, folks still having some concerns about their ability to get diabetes supplies. And when we started this research, that was really what our focus was, was to, um, we, we really were concerned, I think, in at the beginning of March that we would have, um, uh, you know, some panic buying with uh, diabetes supplies, particularly with insulin. There were rumors of insulin shortages going around, and we wanted to get a grip on that. Um, I'll, I'll get to that um, that data in a minute, but the news there is uh, is pretty actually pretty encouraging. Um, however, there has been a really significant impact in the diabetes population in the U.S. on employment and income. Uh, we've seen about 29% of our respondents, so almost one in three have lost either some or all of their income due to COVID-19. Now, of course, um, uh, that's you can see how that played back to the previous figure on um, how people were doing with their, um, uh, their concerns with uh, the uh, financial aspects of the, uh, um, uh, of the situation. But when we look at, you know, obviously with losing unemployment, then the, you know, the obvious question is, well, what's happened to insurance? And about 40% of the folks who have lost their employment have found alternative coverage. That's either through COBRA, through Medicaid, through a state affordable care act marketplace, or by buying an individual plan. Um, and about 20% have reverted to their, or on their spouse's coverage. But we still have, you know, basically 40% of this group currently uninsured, which is um, really quite troubling. And, you know, realistically, we've 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 heard heard a lot about you know working from home um, here in the Bay Area. Lots of tech companies sent their employees home right at the beginning of all of this, um, even before the Bay Area did its uh, lockdown. I think um, you know the tech companies were kind of leading the way. But you know, the truth of the matter is um, that this is a high risk population, high prevalence of cardiovascular disease. Generally speaking, worst outcomes from COVID if they get it, and a significant chunk of these folks are just not able to work from home. 30% of folks with type 2 um, still working outside of the home, basically still going to work as usual. Um, and a quarter of those are working in healthcare. Uh, only five, about 5% 5 of them are actually treating COVID patients. Um, and, and about half of those who are still working as usual are in you know, essential industries. So um, it's, we, we kind of think, you know, when I'm sitting in my home office, I'm thinking, hey, this isn't so bad, you know, but... The, real, the reality is that a lot of these folks just don't have the option to work from home. Now, um, here's some, I think some pretty encouraging news. From a diabetes supply availability perspective, uh, we haven't seen anything get worse. Uh, we see that um, around you know, 83, 84% of folks having no difficulty at all getting their diabetes supplies. Um, of those who are seeing a delay, most of delays are less than seven days, so um, not kind of catastrophic. We don't have pre-virus numbers to benchmark against, so we don't really know whether this is any different, frankly, to the normal situation. Um, uh, and the same is true for... Um, as for insulin as it is for other diabetes supplies and drugs. So we've actually uh, scaled down now our reporting of this. We've gone from being every two weeks to every month. Uh, we don't think there's a lot of volatility in the availability of supplies. As you know, the um, manufacturers have been kind of uh, working very hard to make supplies available and, and uh, it seems to be flowing through to patients without too much trouble. So I think that's one thing that we were all worried about that we can see, uh, we can kind of check off our list for now. Um, let's talk about the impact of um, COVID on diet and exercise, because this is really kind of where the rubber meets the road in terms, of, in terms of diabetes care. So there's a lot on this chart, but the basic story is about twice as many people are saying their diet right now is less healthy under COVID-19 than it than are saying it's more healthy under COVID-19. So, so the balance, if you like, the net effect is that people's diets generally um, not as healthy. Uh, same with exercise. More than twice as many people 
are saying they're getting much less or slightly less exercise than those folks who are saying they're actually getting more exercise. Um, and, you know, if you go into a city like San Francisco, you'll certainly see lots of people out walking. Um, but uh, overall, you know, the level of exercise, I think, is uh, we're seeing it being way down right across the country. Um, if we look at some other aspects of diabetes care, uh, we're asking people basically what's happened to their blood glucose levels. Um, and again, we're seeing about twice as many people saying they're having more highs than pre-COVID than people are saying they're having fewer highs. So again, a net effect, more highs, more hypoglycemia above 180 mg, um, milligrams per deciliter, and um, slightly less marked effect with hypoglycemia. Obviously, this is something that's really mainly affecting um, insulin patients and people on a sulfonylurea. Um, but basically, um, about half as many people again saying they're having more lows than they were before. Um, before COVID. So um, again, uh, more volatility, if you like, um, and generally uh, diabetes, if you think about the basic, the num the basic numbers for diabetes care, the, the situation is a little worse uh, than it was pre-COVID. Now, let's talk about telemedicine because we are in the middle of, I think, what you could describe as a giant forced experiment in telemedicine. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll look at some of the details of this. Uh, so telemedicine has taken up about half of the slack in meeting scheduled appointment needs. So if you look at that, um, of those people who had appointments scheduled when we asked about this, which is a couple of weeks ago, um, basically a similar number, a similar share um, switch to telemedicine has had appointments canceled. Um, in Europe, we've seen the situation being broadly the same, uh, but there are some big national differences in Europe. You know, for example, in Germany, about half of the endo appointments, endocrinologist appointments, have been happening as usual, and only about 15% have been telemedicine. You know, right next door in the Netherlands, only 5% of appointments have been happening in person, and 60% have switched to telemedicine. So the picture is different in different countries, there's no doubt about that. Um, and, uh, uh, but overall, um, here in the US, we're seeing that we've managed to kind of salvage through telemedicine about half of the scheduled uh, appointments for people with diabetes, which is, you know, if you think about ramping up from pretty well zero, uh, that's, that's kind of pretty impressive, really. And that's, I know within the clinical community, there's been tons and tons of uh, workflow modifications and workarounds and technical changes that people have really been moving heaven and earth to make this happen. So what does that what does that um, really what does that really boil down to? Well, basically, if you look at this, about 20, 22 percent of the people with type two in our research panel, which is about um, I said about four and a half thousand people here, have had a telemedicine appointment since COVID started, um, and about eight percent of people with type two diabetes have had a telemedicine appointment with their endocrinologist. Obviously, many more people with type two seeing primary care doctors. Um, for the diabetes care. Um, if you actually break that down in terms of how it's happened, uh, it's majority video in type one and about 50-50 in type two. Um, and uh, so there's been a lot of delivery just by the phone. And uh, that actually has had some impact on how satisfied patients have been with the experience. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. But here's actually what's going on in those appointments. Um, and what you'll see here is, um, there's a lot of data here, but basically about one in five people who've had a telemedicine appointment with an endocrinologist have actually had a prescription change. In other words, it's been you know, pretty much a regular appointment where decisions have been made to change some aspects of the diabetes care. Um, you know, we're still dependent on in-person lab tests here. You can see nearly 40% of people have been reviewing in-person lab tests. We've seen some anecdotal evidence that people have been doing at-home A1C tests, um, but uh, it's just anecdotal. We haven't seen that kind of scale up. Um, but really, if you look across the board there, uh, there's a, quite a lot of evidence that the technology, that especially in things like CGM and insulin pumps, 
that's, that's available has really been put to work. 50% of people who've had an endocrinologist appointment have actually been up, you know, reviewing previously up uploaded CGM or pump data, which is kind of tremendous. You know, to, a couple of years ago, we wouldn't have just seen that, I'm sure. Um, even in the, um, with blood glucose meters, uh, about 20% of people um, uploading blood glucose data in advance before, um, before an appointment, which is, which is kind of great, really. Uh, we asked people for their um, comments about how they felt about the experience. And I think generally, you know, the satisfaction with telemedicine has been pretty high. Um, we measure patient satisfaction across a whole spectrum of things. And we've got 54% of people here saying they're, they were, you know, highly satisfied with their telehealth appointment. And that's a pretty good score. Um, that's certainly uh, near the top end of satisfaction scores um, for drugs, for um, uh, medical devices and everything else. And, you know, generally speaking, what, some of the benefits people have really felt is um, it's more intimate and personal, it's so much more convenient. You know, there's no getting on the bus and, you know, giving up maybe half a day to go to an endocrinologist appointment. Um, so that's uh, been very positive. The fact that people are being able to review data successfully is also very um, positive. Um, some of the things, the negatives people have told us is basically, you know, sometimes the tech just hasn't worked as well as they'd like. Um, there are definitely people who prefer that in-person experience and uh, and didn't, you know, don't don't feel that telemedicine is is an equivalent. Um, and of course, the lack of some testing has been a problem. So where people are unable to get a blood pressure test, uh, unable to get their latest A1C, uh, those things have um, uh, made it a slightly less satisfying experience. But if you look at it overall, the experience has been generally very positive. And I think that's encouraging news. And it actually raises some, it's raised some questions for us as, uh, as a research company which is basically like what happens um, when we return to whatever the new normal looks like, uh, because there's lots of people who have had a good experience here and who will probably want to repeat it. So there are some things that have been impacting satisfaction in this area. Um, generally speaking, folks on insulin um, who had a video call with their provider, more likely to be satisfied with the telemedicine experience. Um, for folks not on insulin, you can see the satisfaction scores are good for both phone and video, but there is no difference in the satisfaction scores. So video is not kind of a, it's not really a game changer in any way um, for, um, for people who are not on a more intensive diabetes therapy. And I think that's an interesting finding. Um, we looked at a couple of other things where um, you know, when you look at the, the what, what was on the agenda, if you like, for the meeting here, um, and what was on the agenda for the for a telemedicine consultation, you'll see here. There's a couple of things um, that are um, that kind of stand out, uh, which have ha had a, an impact on uh, whether it's been a positive experience or not. The first one is basically kind of what you'd expect: folks who actually got a prescription change, um, more likely to be satisfied than folks who basically had a decision put off um, because of uh, unavailability of lab work or they wanted to wait for an in-person appointment. So just the ability to get something done has been a driver of, of higher patient satisfaction there. Um, and then the other one is, oddly enough, when we've seen people um, being able to upload blood glucose data in advance from a meter, um, that's been generally associated with much higher levels of satisfaction than uh, when people have actually had to kind of work it out during the, during the consultation itself. Um, there are significant numbers of people now using, uh, you know, more advanced blood glucose meters that can upload data to the cloud um, where it can be accessed by the doctor. Um, and those do seem to be um, really pretty useful tools in the context of telemedicine appointments. We didn't see the same thing with CGM, with continuous glucose monitors. But to be honest, most people who are using a continuous glucose monitor do have access to their data online. So it's a different, slightly different situation. All right. So just a quick summary. Um, 
we have seen a really dramatic growth in telemedicine, you know, from, from really it being a specialized kind of function for taking care of people in rural areas and things like that, um, uh, to it being something that's, you know, where, you know, somewhere around a third of the um, people have had appointments uh, scheduled switch to telemedicine. So that is a giant experiment, um, and we've seen a lot of growth. And I think the big questions for us now um, are what can payers and providers and patients tell us about the, about the experience? There's a lot more to unpack here. We've only really scratched the surface with one or two questions. Um, what are the opportunities and strategic implications for, for tech companies, for pharma companies, and for healthcare providers? Because there could really be a, a significant change here. Um, and then really one of the questions that we're curious about is, you know, for those of you who are um, uh, on the, um, on the insurance reimbursement side, like what outcomes and evidence, you know, do, do you folks need to see to, um, to reimburse telemedicine innovations? Because, you know, reimbursement over this time, there's been a lot of barriers removed to reimbursement because of this situation. Um, we don't know what's going to happen when things settle back down. And then finally, you know, with a, with the Verda perspective, what future models of diabetes care do we think we're likely to see? There's this really compelling combination of telemedicine and, and telecoaching, remote coaching, which um, could be a very attractive kind of proposition and really effective. Okay, my timer is going off. I'm done. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Richard. And again, uh, thank you for you know, what you do for being the voice of you know, people living with diabetes. It's so very much appreciated. On to our next speaker. Teresa Link is here to share what Verda is doing to support our patients throughout this pandemic, as well as offer some advice and resources for executives, providers, and patients on this call today. Teresa is a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator. She has been a health coach here at Verda for nearly five years. She's passionate about empowering patients to take an active role in their treatment while using data to drive dietary choices every day. Above all else, Teresa believes in the power of connection and how building a true relationship with patients is the key to lasting behavior change. I have had the pleasure of working alongside Teresa now for years, and I can tell you that she is one amazing coach. And so, Teresa, over to you. All right. Thank you for that warm introduction, Britt. Um, as Britt said, my name is Teresa and I'll be spending the next few minutes talking about the role of the health coach team um, in supporting our patients during COVID-19. Okay, let's see here. Sorry about this, having some, there we go, okay. Uh, so most of our patients come to Verda with a variety of challenge that often accompany a diabetes diagnosis. And they have a lot of these things in common, a history of failed attempts at changing their behavior, an unhealthy relationship with food, feelings of shame, high levels of stress, and a limited support network. And adhering to life, lifelong behavior change is really hard. A lot of people with diabetes already feel the world is working against them and setting them up for failure. Therefore, we need a lot of support for, for these folks. So what we've learned over the past couple of months is that our patients with a limited support network have been the ones that have been struggling the most during this pandemic. Um, COVID-19 has surfaced the vitally important need for glucose control, but most people can't make the necessary changes to achieve this without having someone in their corner. And that's why that human connection that our patients have with their health coach is so critical to their success. And what some of our patients are saying, um, when I heard the word coach, I was expecting a cheerleader, but what I got was a friend, someone who's easy to talk to, supportive, and frankly, really knows their stuff. Visits with my coach help my health tremendously, especially with the lockdown situation. Many, like myself, are people persons, and just as our psyche is, is so much better. Just the chats with you brighten my days. So that's really nice stuff to hear from our, from our patients. Um, 
the fact of the matter is that many people are simply just trying to survive right now. Feelings of grief, loneliness, and anxiety are commonplace on almost a daily basis. And the thought of really trying to make a lifestyle change during such an unsettling time as right now is more than most can really wrap their heads around. But with the right support system, many of our patients are able to not only survive during this time, but actually thrive. And our health coaches empower patients to think about how their thoughts and feelings have an impact on their daily actions, which then impacts their body and their health outcomes. So next I'd like to walk you through the patient experience from onboarding to reversal and finally sustained success. So our patients are supported from day one. We have a team dedicated to helping them get enrolled, answer commonly asked questions, and obtain a welcome kit uh, with a cellular connected scale, glucose and ketone testing supplies, a food scale, and some additional handy uh, materials to, to help them all get set up for success. This particular team also helps the new patient establish a relationship with the Verda physician, which is a very critical step. Meeting the physician allows our patients to understand how their care will be tailored over time based on their medication history, health history, and social history. And finally, our patients begin a guided education curriculum aimed at understanding the science behind the Verda treatment and what they'll be eating, what's expected, and how to interact with various members of the care team. So let's talk about diabetes reversal and how this actually works. It all starts with nutritional changes, and this includes individualized carbohydrate reduction aimed at achieving blood glucose control without the need for additional medication. Something our patients really like about our nutritional protocol is that there's no calorie counting required and our patients can truly eat until they're full. Also, there's no exercise that's required, although, you know, we certainly support our patients um, who desire to make this change to their physical activity routine. In fact, a lot of people find that they've got quite a bit more energy and they want to start moving more on their own. Um, and then our health coaches are available to help patients in a variety of ways um, as they engage in the Verda treatment. They provide nutritional guidance, support, inspiration, problem solving, uh, empowerment, and they also serve as a first line for addressing various health concerns. And pictured here is one of our health coaches named, uh, named Catherine, a real life health coach here at Verda. Uh, then, in terms of biomarker logging, as you can see uh, pictured next, our patients are logging their biomarkers every day, uh, their blood glucose, weight, and blood ketones, uh, just to name a few of those. Both the health coaches and the provider team are able to see this biomarker data in real time and are able to make rapid changes as the patient adjusts to the changes in their nutrition. And then our physicians are able to use that information to adjust patients' medications as needed in real time. And this can happen rapidly. In fact, just last week I had a patient undergo four separate reductions to his insulin in just a five-day period. So now I'd like to show you what this kind of, you know, what this actually looks like um, in, a, in our tech-enabled environment. So this first photo is an actual meal um, eaten by a Verda patient. They snapped this photo and sent it to their health coach in the app so that they could get feedback about the meal. That's one of many ways that our patients will get feedback about uh, what they're eating. Um, and then as you can see pictured here, health coaching is taking place um, through our patient app, um, through direct secure messaging. And our patients are really taking advantage of this. You know, on average, two to four messages um, shared every day between, between the patients and their coaches. And then biomarker logging also takes place through the patient app. As you can, you can see a couple of graphs that our, um, our patients are able to see with their biomarkers um, showing graphed over time. This information is again transmitted to our provider facing electronic medical record. A couple of little you know, screenshots that you can see there. Um, and this is where our providers manage the de-prescription process and we further empower them with data-driven insights to actually anticipate patients who are uh, potentially in need of some sort of medical attention and then take action accordingly, often by, often by adjusting their medications. And this is really one of the greatest advantages of our continuous care model 
in traditional medicine, patients often wait, uh, wait you know, weeks or months before they see their provider. So changes are made at a much slower pace. Um, whereas here at Verda, we're able to make real-time changes based on the data that our patients share with us through the app. And finally, once we're able to achieve reversal, the job is, is not yet complete. We, we still need to sustain these results over time. So most people are actually pretty surprised to hear that we got a 90% retention rate after one year. This is actually three or four times higher than um, most typical behavioral, behavioral programs out there. And the way that we do this is, um, first and foremost, this idea of reversal. You know that you can, uh, to be able to know that you can actually reverse the effects that type 2 diabetes has on the body while simultaneously taking fewer medications is incredibly motivating. Um, and then our results also happen really fast, which is pretty motivating as well. You know, for example, most patients taking insulin cut their insulin in half by just the first week. And then finally, we have a tech-enabled data-powered care team. Not only do our patients build close relationships with the members of their care team, but they also um, utilize predictive technology that's developed by our data scientists that can actually anticipate patient lapses allowing us to intervene faster, which is really cool. It makes us feel like we have uh, superpowers. And um, again, just sort of a high level view of what, our, um, what is so critical to the success from the, from the coach team. Our coaches are building deep relationships. Um, when it comes to the, who we hire, we're pretty selective there. Um, less than 5% of the applicants are, are actually accepted. Um, and we really, really put a big emphasis on the ability um, to show um, a high degree of empathy with our, with our patients. That's, that's something that we are uh, needing to have all of our team members um, pretty well versed in and pretty fluid in. Um, most of our teammates have a background in behavioral health. And uh, in addition, they will receive 110 hours of training upon, uh, upon hire, and that includes 35 hours um, or more, actually, of that of uh, behavioral health training. So who are these Verta coaches? Well, these are just a few. Um, we've got Catherine, Carolyn, and Adon, who are all featured here. Um, our health coaches are really qualified, and, and they really know their stuff. They've got a mix of degrees and backgrounds, including PhDs in nutrition, um, registered nurses, registered dietitians, CDEs, exercise physiologists, licensed mental health practitioners, uh, masters in public health, uh, masters in social work. We've got a huge variety there. And we do take a team-based approach, allowing our patients to really get that benefit of that wide variety of skills and, and really get the best of, that the Verta Clinic has to offer. But above all else, we have a team of coaches who really deeply care about helping people and building those connections. And we know it's that human to human connection, connection that our patients really value the most, especially now. Over to you, Britt. Great. Thank you so much, Teresa. Um, next, we will hear from two of our Verta patients who can share firsthand their experiences, many of which you'll notice align very nicely with what Teresa just shared. I always say that you know, our patients keep us honest here at Verta. We can tell you about what it is that we do here, but who better to tell you than those going through it themselves? So first we have Kevin Swire. We are extremely grateful to welcome Kevin, who has been a patient with us for just about two years. He's actually coming up on his anniversary very soon and has achieved so much in that time. But I will save that for him to share. He is a proud husband and father to both his children and his four dogs, who I had to mention. Um, together, they're a huge reason why Kevin has remained so committed to his health. So Kevin, I'm gonna turn it over to you to share your story. Well, thanks, Britt. Uh, as, uh, as she uh, alluded to, I'm coming up on my two-year anniversary of being a Verta patient who's reversed his diabetes. And that was after six years of being uh, of everyday insulin and uh, a various uh, number of other drugs that my doctor had put me on. Uh, I want to share a little bit of my experience so that I can... Um, so I can deliver the message that I have to, especially with respect to, to, to COVID-19, because I have a very personal story that I can share about that. Um, I remember 
go almost eight years ago when how, how shocked and scared I was when my doctor first told me I was a, di a diabetic. You know, I asked him a couple of questions, you know, what can I do to get off of this? Well, you know, he, and he pretty much said, he goes, no, this is, this is your new life. This is your new normal to hop on a phrase that seems to be getting a lot of traction lately. So I walked away thinking that I had a lifetime sentence of diabetes. And this is coming from a doctor who I, I, I like, uh, who has helped my family so much and who identifies himself as a diabetic specialist. So that was six years of taking metformin, insulin, glipizides, and trulicity every day. Uh, the most encouraging part of this is that when uh, I was thinking about what I was going to say to everyone today, uh, I had to review my old prescription list to remember all of these because it's been so long since I've taken them. Uh, I started off so it was just so luck of the draw because a, a company email that, you know, the, the kind you usually just hit the lead on, you know, got sent, and, you know, saying, you can, you can reverse your diabetes or something along those lines. And I did everything I could to try and prove them wrong. I said, I'm going to sign up for this because this is just another way of grabbing money from me. And I'm going to dot every I and cross every T and go after everything that they tell me to do just to prove that, like my doctor told me, that diabetes doesn't go away. Well, I was the one who, uh, who got fooled by that. Uh, I, I signed up for Verda, and after 30 days of education, which was the most important part of all of this, because I learned how many things that we've been taught throughout my lifetime that were just wrong. They were, they were, we had wrong uh, you know, preconceptions about things, and we were going after some things in a completely wrong way. So that 30 days of education to me, and I tell everybody, is was just invaluable because it programmed me to lead a better life. And I didn't even realize at that point in time how much better it was going to be. But uh, so after 30 days of learning all, all this stuff and being taught it, uh, I was off insulin in four days after beginning the treatment on the, on the program, four days. And, I, and I, I remember thinking to myself, six years I was going to see my doctor. And all he ever did was change my medicine, increase my insulin, put me on a new drug. Uh, and in four days on Verda, I was off insulin. Well, at the end of the week, I was off glipizides. And after 30 days, uh, I had actually left Trulicity behind too. And it was a very expensive medicine, so I certainly didn't miss it. But um, my health coach is the perfect support mecha uh, mechanism. It's so good to know that they're out there. They check in with you. And the most important part of this is, is that at first, I was a little bit scared to ask questions, but having a real doctor available to you to answer some of these questions in addition to your health coach, like inside of 20, I can't get a, a doctor's appointment in, in, in weeks now. And in less than 24 hours, I was having a real medical doctor get back to me with actual advice on how to handle whatever my particular problem was. And that's the greatest part of this. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, whatever comes up, Whatever curveball gets thrown your way, Verda seems to have the answer. And I don't mind if it's just, you know, some coldness in my feet, a cramp in my legs. I bring it up to my health coach, and they come back, and they have the answer for me. And it's just amazing to me to know that there's that level of preparedness and that level of care. And, and these people are – I've had two health coaches so far – and they've both been some of the most special people that I've ever come across. They're just wonderful to work with. They care about me and they help my health get back to what it is now, which is I haven't felt this good in 15 years. I thought I was just getting older and that this is just what comes with it. But when I was able to reverse my diabetes and, and keep in a healthier lifestyle like I, like I have, I, I've never felt better. So... I'm just so happy about all of that, and I just wanted to share it with, every, uh, with everybody. But let me bring this full circle, because we do want to talk about the phenomenon that we have going on in front of all of us right now, and that's this COVID-19 pandemic that's, uh, that's affecting uh, us as a population. Let me bring it full circle by saying that last March, 
I had a trip scheduled with my son to go back to visit New York. I was actually going to a St. John's basketball game versus Marquette at Madison Square Garden. And uh, it was right about when this was all, we didn't even know, you know, you heard things in the news being referred to and stuff. We had no idea really what it was or that I was literally walking into like ground zero for, uh, for this uh, pandemic that, that, that we're in. So while I was there, I contracted what I chalked up to be the worst cold of my life. Now let me flash ahead a little bit to give you a little perspective. About a week prior, uh, one of my best friends and I were hugging and celebrating that uh, our sons had just won the uh, dual team state wrestling championship here in Illinois where I live. And we were just so excited. I wouldn't find out till about a month later that he had tested positive for COVID-19. His wife was a nurse and had access to testing. And, and, and uh, I, I strongly suspect because when I was in New York, the bottom just fell out. And I felt like someone was standing on my chest when I woke up in the morning. Uh, the, the expectorations were like nothing I've ever had before. There was just a, a, a mild fever going the entire time. So I strongly suspect that I know I was exposed to this and I strongly suspect I, I, I suffer from it. But the one thought that went through my head through all of this, because I was there just with my son and I didn't want to ruin his time. And my wife who takes such great care of me, wasn't there to help me out like she almost always is. The one thought that went through my, my head was, where would I be if I hadn't done the work to get my health back like I have with Verda. And I was so thankful that I had the strength and the confidence to deal with what was in front of me because I just couldn't imagine knowing what I know about what I felt like when I was a full-blown diabetic taking insulin every day, how I could have, how I could have survived this. But anyway, like I said, looking back now, uh, I do believe that it's, uh, it's definitely something that we have to address. And I'm just thankful that, you know, I, I took advantage of everything that Verda has to offer to make myself better able to deal with uh, what it is I had in front of me. So... Thank you, Kevin, for sharing and for being here with us at Verda. We really appreciate you. I am going to uh, now bring to the screen Denise. Uh, Denise is another one of our amazing patients here to share her story. Uh, this is Denise Mayo, and she's been a patient with us for over two and a half years. She is the proud mom of Christopher, who is a recent law school graduate, of course, proud mom. Uh, she spends her time taking care of family, painting, and enjoys staying in touch with other Verda patients in the Verda online community and is a Verda ambassador. So Denise, will you tell us a little bit about yourself? Thank you, Dr. Britt. I'm so honored to be here today. Uh, it's, it was been a long road that led me to Verda. I was diagnosed with diabetes about 25 years ago, and um, I went the conventional route. I saw an endocrinologist who put me on multiple, multiple expensive medications, told me to, to um, uh, do a low-carb diet, and I did all of that, but I still found myself getting more and more sick I, over time. I, I didn't know why that was happening, and I developed some serious complications which were devastating. My eyesight, I um, started having trouble with that and uh, I had to start receiving uh, two eye injections almost every month for about two to three years. And I was told I was going to go blind if I didn't get my blood sugar under control. And I de developed diabetic neuropathy and my feet were numb, I was off balance, I was, I had to resort to a walker a, a few months before I joined Verda, and that was devastating, and I was just very debilitated, and I, I just thought something terrible is just about to happen, and then one day I saw a post about 
Verda on Facebook and I couldn't believe my eyes. I saw that Verda could treat my diabetes and reverse it with either eliminating or re reducing all this medication. And I, I didn't even know that was in the realm of possibility. I thought I would be on all this medication the rest of my life. And so I called immediately and thank God I was accepted. And I just responded from day one. Um, it, it's like my body was saying, you know, what took you so long, finally. And, um, and now here it is two and a half years later, I, uh, I've lost a hundred pounds, I'm off all insulin, and I, I feel like my life has been saved. And I'm, I'm just so grateful to Verda for that. Well, Denise, thank you. Has your emotional state uh, changed given you know, the COVID-19 crisis and everything going on? Can you tell us a little bit about that? I think it definitely has changed. I'd like to preface by saying that what I'm going through just pales into comparison with so many that are suffering and on the front lines are going through and my heart goes out to them. But um, there is uncertainty. I'm, I'm in my relatively safe little bubble, but I still think about things like, uh, you know, will we have enough food or uh, what if uh, I can track this or just, you know, I don't even know what's going to happen to us all. And so I do think of that, but I try and put it out of my mind as much as possible. And just, um, I know I can't change yesterday. I don't know what tomorrow or the future will bring. So I just try to concentrate on today and make it the best that I can. Is there anything, in addition to what you just said, um, you know, anything specifically that you're doing that you've found to be helpful to, keep, to remind yourself of that? I, I've tried to uh, look at this uh, whole pandemic situation as just a golden opportunity to work on myself. I want to uh, leave this experience better and stronger than when I entered. And so I'm trying to uh, get my blood sugar down even more. Um, I'd like to be in double digits consistently. So I'm trying to watch the foods that I eat very strictly. And I'm trying to do some exercise. I um, uh, would like to say I walk every day, but I, I walk some, but I kind of switched out walking for swimming. And uh, I enjoy that tremendously. And that we've had a lot of storms in North Texas the last couple of weeks. It's gotten cooler. And in fact, my neighbor's huge trampoline took flight and went over the fence and trees and landed in my pool the other day. But um, I know it'll calm down and I'll get back to swimming. But uh, I've tried to do, oh, like spring cleaning and I cleaned out the garage and um, I planted an herb garden and I like to. Uh, just sit out on the back porch and uh, commune with my herbs and uh, uh, listen to podcasts. And Brian S. in the community uh, told me about TikTok. So I like to watch TikTok videos. And I've done a little bit of keto baking, which I don't usually do, but I think uh, a little bit of uh, keto pandemic comfort foods is okay. And uh, so just, just trying to make each day as best I can. Sounds like you're keeping yourself busy and finding plenty to do. Uh, you mentioned, you know, communicating with people in the Verda community. Um, what about the support that you find there and from your health coach? Oh, there's just wonderful support with uh, my coach and in, in the community. Uh, I think coaches are angels on earth. Uh, I really do. I've had three tremendous coaches and I couldn't have made it uh, this far without them. Uh, I, I know that for certain. And my current coach, uh, Coach Brent, he's just been a rock during this pandemic. And um, he, he just has been so supportive and my sleep has been all out of whack and he's a big proponent on sleep. And I know it can affect every biomarker. I know this and I know I need to work on it. And, but he's sent me podcasts and articles and just uh, tips and, words of wisdom and uh, it's getting better. Um, uh, but my time, I'm just 
just the, the time that this virus has created. I don't even know what day it is half the time. I saw on 60 Minutes the other day that they said every day seems like Tuesday. You know, it, just my conception of time is off. But I'd like to tell one story about Coach Brent, and this is just epitomizes the kind of coach he is and what the Verda coaches do. Last Christmas Eve, um, I was having a crisis. It wasn't a virus crisis, but it was a crisis. Uh, it was uh, the day of my annual Christmas Eve party, which the last two Verda Christmases, this party has done me in both years. And uh, so I was telling Brent about it, how I just wanted to stay strong uh, this Christmas and, and not deal with all the ramifications of going off track. And I said, Brent, please send me Verta Coach vibes at 7.30 p.m. your time. And I was just kind of halfway joking. But um, anyway, uh, later on that night at the party, I had my phone in my hand and I was taking pictures around and um, I heard my phone go ding. And I thought, who in the world could be texting me on Christmas Eve? And I looked down and exactly at 7.30 p.m., it was Brent sending me Verta Coach vibes and, uh, and words of encouragement that, that I could be strong and make it. And that just meant the world to me. There he was celebrating Christmas Eve with his family and he took the time to encourage me. And I, I couldn't mess up after that. Uh, I made it through the party. And in fact, I made it through the entire holiday season. And I just think, uh, Verta Coach vibes are very powerful. Thanks, Denise. So moving on to one of our last questions for you as we come to a close on this, on this webinar. Um, with your Verta treatment working for you, you know, you mentioned your blood sugar improvements and all of the kind of health improvements that you've made to get rid of your medications. Tell us about <clears throat> how you're feeling in terms of risk during this time of COVID-19 as we're seeing in the research that blood sugar control is so important. Um, could you talk to us a little bit about that? Uh, yes, I, I definitely feel less at risk because I know that I am doing everything I can to keep my blood sugar under control through Verda. Uh, I've seen time and time again on the news doctors discussing the serious patients that have been brought to the hospitals and they are dealing with high blood sugar. And I just think this combination of blood sugar, high blood sugar, and virus just do not mix. And so I think, you know, for us to have a fighting chance is just to uh, stay with Verda and maintain our blood sugar and just be well and, and strong in case, God forbid, we do contract this virus. Mm, thanks, Denise. That was great to end on. But do you have anything else you'd like to share before I do a quick Q&A? Um, I just would like to say thank you to everyone who attended today. It's, it's been wonderful uh, talking about Verda. And if you're someone out there that is thinking about Verda for yourself, or you're a doctor considering it for your patients, or an employer thinking about it for your employees, please, please give it serious consideration. Um, we are in a diabetic epidemic in this country today. Uh, half the country is either pre-diabetic or diabetic. And obviously we are doing something very, very wrong. And I truly believe Verda is the answer to this. And I know it's been my answer and I'm just so grateful for it. And I thank you so much. Well, thank you. And thank you to all of our panelists. So we do have a lot of great questions, and given that we are at the top of the hour, we are going to reach out to make sure that we get your questions answered. So in the last minute here, feel free to um, type in anything that you may have, and our team will, will get back to you. We thank you again to our panelists for joining us today, uh, and to all of you, our participants here on this call. Um, you know, we hope that you've gotten a sense of how those living with diabetes and those helping those living with diabetes, our Verda Health coaches, are responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. And you know, these new waters we're all navigating together. 
If you want to learn more about Verda and how we are helping large employers, health plans, and their members reverse type 2 diabetes during COVID-19, please, please email partner at vertahealth.com. That's partner at vertahealth.com. Thank you all again. Have a great day.